The dinosaur in the swamp is a scary about boy and his new friend. Johnny lived in a little town in the south. He was like most of the other kids in the town except that he was known to have an exceptionally active imagination. He would wander off for hours, and then he would come back with the most amazing stories about having been kidnapped by gypsies or meeting a flying saucer or something wild like that. Johnny's mother wasn't terribly surprised when one evening Johnny rushed into the house shouting, Mommy, Mommy, I saw a dinosaur in the swamp. That's nice, said his mother. But I hope you didn't play with it. Dr. Brown says that dinosaurs have germs. Johnny was rather disappointed at the cool reaction, because this time he wasn't making up a story. He really had seen a dinosaur in the swamp. Johnny tried to tell other people in the town. The reaction was just about the same. Some said, you should stop telling big lies like that. Or, sure, sure you did. Others just snickered and walked away. Now, Johnny was more than disappointed, he was humiliated and angry. He decided that he was going to show everybody in town that he was no liar. Johnny decided that he was going to make friends with the dinosaur, and then he would make all those people who didn't believe him pay. When he went into the swamp the next time, he took a bag of peanuts with him. When he met the dinosaur he asked it if it wanted a peanut. The dinosaur shook its head to indicate that it didn't. That's good, said Johnny, because then I can eat all of the peanuts myself. Naturally, as soon as the dinosaur heard that, there was nothing in the world it wanted more than a peanut. It whimpered and begged until Johnny very reluctantly gave it a peanut, and then another. But first he made the dinosaur promise that if he gave it peanuts, it would do everything he said. When Johnny went home that evening, he once again told his mother that he had met the dinosaur in the swamp. You shouldn't play with dinosaurs, said his mother. Dr. Brown says that dinosaurs have germs. Well, said Johnny. Dr. Brown shouldn't say such things about dinosaurs. It might make them mad. His mother ignored the last remark. Later that night when the family was asleep, Johnny snuck back to the swamp, where he found the dinosaur waiting for him. He led the dinosaur to Dr. Brown's house. The next morning Dr. Brown's neighbors awoke to find that the doctor's house, garage, and lawn had all been stomped out of existence and Dr. Brown along with them. The only clue that the police were ever able to find was a couple of peanut shells. After that, Johnny began having the dinosaur stomp out the town a block at a time. On one particularly good night he had the dinosaur stomp his school flat, while a PTA meeting was going on. Pretty soon there was nothing at all left of the town except the house in which Johnny and his family lived. One afternoon the family were all sitting on the front porch, and Johnny happened to mention that he had seen the dinosaur in the swamp again. Well, said Johnny's mother. I hope you don't play with it, because the late Dr. Brown said that dinosaurs have germs. Johnny whistled. The dinosaur came bounding out of the swamp. Johnny threw it a peanut and said, step on mother first. La Llorona is a scary story about one crazy woman. Once was a poor woman whose husband had died in an accident, although some say he was murdered. The woman mourned for a long time and worked hard to raise her two children. As time went by, however, she began to be interested in the love of a man again, and she found that a young Spanish rancher was paying more and more attention to her in the marketplace. One day, the young gentleman came to her in the market and invited her to his fine ranch house, but asked that she use the servant's entrance. This the woman did and after many such secret visits, during which the young rancher treated her very kindly, she found she was in love with the man. One night, as the two sat opposite each other, holding hands across a fine polished banquet table where they had eaten a romantic and delicious meal by candlelight, the young rancher told her that he loved her. She told him how much she loved him also and suggested that they should be married. The young rancher drew back his hand. After that, he invited her less frequently and treated her less well. At last, he told her that he could never marry her because he was a rich landowner and she was a poor person of no important family. In fact, her family was an important one in the village from which she came, but that meant nothing to the rancher. 
As she begged her lover to reconsider, he cast about desperately for something to say that would end their relationship forever. At last he thought he knew what to say. He told her that he could never marry her because she had children by her previous marriage, and these children would challenge the inheritance of any children the two of them might have together. The rancher left the room and the woman, weeping, left and returned to her poor little house. There her children were happy to see her, but she saw only two stones that stood in the road to her happiness. She led the young boys to the irrigation ditch not far from their house and told them to bathe before going to bed. When the boys were in the shallow part of the ditch, she came to them and very tenderly carried them out into the deep water along the opposite bank. There she lowered them into the water and let them drown. Now, she imagined, she could marry the rancher. She ran, dripping with water, to the home of the young wealthy man. She demanded admittance at the servant's door and ran past the butler to the man's bedroom. There he was kneeling at prayers. She tracked mud from her sandals as she ran to him and told him in a crazed voice what she had done. Instead of being pleased, the rancher was horrified. He struck the woman and called for his servants to drag her out the front door. He rode his horse to the church and awoke the priest to confess his sins and pray for his soul, and the souls of the murdered boys. The woman, driven from the ranch house by the servants, wandered the streets, crying and screaming. She staggered to the deep irrigation ditch and saw the bodies of her sons floating there. She lost what was left of her mind. Now, at night, along the waterways, drainage ditches, and irrigation's ditches, you can see an old woman wandering in a ragged white dress. She is crying softly and calling almost in a high whisper, looking for her sons. And if you have been a sinner, she will come toward you. At first she will look to you like a beautiful, kind lady with a sweet smile, but as she reaches where you are standing, she changes to her true form. Her face becomes a rotting skull with stinking flesh hanging off it and hollow, burning eye sockets. She can take your soul along with her to wherever it is she goes, and she will cry. She will cry for herself, for her dead children, and for your lost soul. She is the crying woman. La Llorona.